Good evening, and welcome to Sacred Heart Chapel's Sculpture Garden. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this vigil of the Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, we encourage your lively participation at this evening's celebration. As a reminder, out of an abundance of care and concern for the health and safety of others, we kindly ask that you wear your masks for the entire duration of the liturgy. We thank you for your cooperation. Good evening. I am Timothy Snyder. I am the 16th president of Loyola Marymount University. Welcome to commencement mass for our 109th commencement exercises. Congratulations to our LMU graduates from the classes of 2020 and 2021. Congratulations to our lion parents and grandparents and to the siblings, family, and friends of our graduates and indeed of our alumni. Thank you for loving these beautiful beings into the people they are and continue to become. I don't think I'm alone in this one. I am thrilled to be back here physically on the bluff. And of course, this is where 110 years ago, a group of Jesuits came together to establish this blessed institution that we now call Loyola Marymount University. How fitting is it that we gather on this majestic night in this special place overlooking the city of angels to celebrate your, that's students and parents and friends and family and alumni, commencement mass on the vigil of the feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, who of course is the founder of the Society of Jesus. The second reading chosen for this celebration reminds us that whatever we do in our lives, we should always do what we do for the greater glory of God. And we will pray these words again later this evening in communion song, but remember those words, especially you students, for the greater glory of God. God and take them to heart as you continue to encounter this fairly stated, definitely stated, unpredictable world. As we emerge from the challenges of this past year, and a little more than the past year, more uncertainty certainly awaits us. Moments and events for which we have no rehearsal. That is life, after all. What is certain, the earth turns its face once again into the light and is deeply in need of our LMU graduates. Alumni, now alumni, of the classes of 2020 and 2021, the world needs us to step out and set the world ablaze with compassion with love, with goodness, all in the spirit of the sisters of the Sacred Heart of Mary, the religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary, the sisters of St. Joseph of Orange, and the brothers of St. Ignatius of Loyola, all dedicated to the greater glory of God. So take that spirit into the world so dearly in need of you. 
Take the knowledge and purpose you gained here into the world so that the world will know who you are and who we are here at LMU. And always remember who you are and whose you are. God bless each and every one of you. Our presider and homilist for this celebration is the Reverend Mark Reeves of the Society of Jesus, who's also our director of campus ministry. So I ask that you please rise and join your voices into one as we sing the festival gathering. And let us belt it out so that the entire city will look upon us and will hear us and know that all are welcome here at LMU. Thank you for being with us this evening.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, here we are, right where the LMU journey first began, Sacred Heart Chapel and the Bluff. This sacred ground where we stand tonight is where countless generations of lions have fallen in love, right there on that bench. I'd like to know the number of wedding proposals that have taken place, place there over the years. The Bluff is also a place where generations of lions have come to dream, have come to contemplate, and to creatively imagine, we call it discern, their futures. As we look over the city of angels tonight, over our nation and world that opens over the vastness of the Pacific Ocean, let us consider how God may be speaking to us about the ways we might use our particular gifts and talents and skills, all that we have learned and all the ways in which we have grown here at LMU to better serve the world's greatest needs. So as we gather for this Eucharistic celebration on this feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, one of LMU's patron saints, as we enter into our thanksgiving, worship and praise of our God, let us pause to ask God to open our hearts so that we may encounter Jesus and follow him more faithfully in our lives. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object for laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord.
A reading for the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoiding, avoid giving offense, whether to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father loves me, so also I love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you, and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you. Love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. What an aspirational and life-directing, life-animating message to receive from our God in our gospel tonight. Love one another. God's reminder of our life calling, of our vocation as Christians, is most welcome as we gather to ritually celebrate the great accomplishments and academic achievements of our graduates and begin our commencement celebrations for the classes of 2020 and 2021. Go Lions! <laughs> now, it goes without saying, of course, that no great achievement is the result of any one person. As we celebrate Eucharist and offer our thanks and praise to God tonight, for so many good gifts, we likewise give thanks to God for the family, friends, and LMU faculty and staff who have aided our graduates in their successes, and of course, 
supported them in their struggles. So let's offer all those gathered tonight a warm <laughs> applause at Thanksgiving. While we typically consider commencement events to be a graduation of sorts from the classroom, no matter how temporary that might be, this past year has brought us all back to various existential classrooms where much learning has taken place. We've all engaged in non-stop, non-credit-bearing internships in human life. And if we've paid attention by opening wide our hearts and minds, aided by the courage to be radically honest with ourselves, I think we can say that we've rediscovered or perhaps relearned what is really important in life, family, faith, virtue, love, truth, character, justice, and radical inclusion for all. These are precisely the human virtues that Jesuit and Marymount education at LMU aspires to impart through its mission as envisioned by St. Ignatius of Loyola nearly 500 years ago. From the beginning, from the foundation of the first school in Messina, Italy in 1548, Jesuit schools have sought to provide the very best academic education available through the tireless pursuit of academic excellence. At the same time, Jesuit schools, as inspired by St. Ignatius, have also had the moral imperative, a moral imperative too. It's a mission to form responsible citizens and future leaders who are committed to the common good and to caring for those who are most vulnerable. In short, it is the moral imperative that Jesus imparts to every disciple. Love one another. We speak of this moral imperative often at LMU when we remind ourselves of our educational mission to inspire members of the LMU family to be people who are for and with others. We know what remaining in God's love means. It means remaining grafted to the vine that is Christ, Christ who sends us out to be his disciples and to truly love one another. As we celebrate the Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola tonight as part of this year's commencement events, we do so at the beginning of the Ignatian year as the church celebrates the 500th anniversary of the conversion of St. Ignatius and the 400th anniversary of his canonization as a saint. Most of us may be familiar with the life-changing event that Ignatius experienced when his leg was shattered by a cannonball at the Battle of Pamplona in Spain in 1521. But in fact, what is most interesting about Ignatius's injury is what happens during his recovery and the 34 remaining years of his life. It is during the months of recovery that Ignatius discovers his true self, that in the moments of feeling sorry for himself in silence and in the two books that he read, The Imitation of Christ and the Lives of the Saints, he became inspired to do great things for God. During these moments, he was able to notice and reflect upon, perhaps for the first time in his life, the yearnings of his heart that gave him the most contentment and consolation and peace. It was during this time that Ignatius began to experience a conversion. He gradually began to dream differently about his life. He no longer dreamt of pursuing his own glory. Rather, he began dreaming and seeking God's glory. That is, his heartfelt imagining and desire to pursue ways to live his life in such a way that give God greater glory and honor was what was at his heart and at his center. 
As he dreamed about these things, he discovered much joy and deep consolation. He had a vision for his life to be an imitator of Christ in both deed and in word. St. Ignatius was able to discern God's dream for him. He was a dreamer that changed the world around him. If it were not for his dream to offer his life in love, in service, or as Ignatius would say in his native tongue, in todo amar y servir, and give God greater honor and glory, we would not be here today. LMU would never have been imagined. God had a dream for Ignatius, and God has a dream for each one of us. Each of us will make our own choices, and we pray that these choices will be truly life-giving for each of us and for our different communities and, indeed, for our world. I would like to invite each of you to take some time during our commencement events to stop and to dream, to use your prayerful imagination as inspired by St. Ignatius and to ponder what great things God is offering each of you as we begin to emerge from our own cannonball moments as we come out of, we pray, out of this, um, this pandemic. In the words of Sister Peg Dolan of the Religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary, words that she gave when she delivered her 2008 commencement address, she urges lions both past and present to dream big, big enough to fulfill God's dream for you, a perfect human being that gives glory to God. Ground your life, Sister Peg would say, ground your life in the love of God and the love for others and for all creation, making life better for you and all that you meet in your life journey, no matter where you are and what you do. As we turn to celebrate the Eucharist together tonight and ask the Lord to feed and nourish us well for our life journeys, may the strength found in the Eucharist help us to respond most fully or more fully to the great gift revealed in Jesus' selfless love and great care for us. As the gifts of bread and wine are offered today, may we see ourselves in these simple gifts. We beg the Lord with fervent prayer that we may receive our daily bread here tonight as we pray. Take us, Lord. Offer your blessing upon us. Break open our hearts so that we may follow your example of selfless giving and love for all those we meet. Help us to love one another and offer greater honor and glory to you. Finally, let us savor the words of a prayer for generosity attributed to St. Ignatius. Dearest Lord, teach me, teach us to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and to not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not seek for rest, to labor and not to seek reward, save that of knowing that I do, that we do, your will. Amen. Encouraged by St. Ignatius of Loyola to ask for what we desire, we call upon God who hears and answers our prayers. We pray for the church, for the servants working in the spirit of Ignatius to bring God's word to all people, for the ones who seek to find God in all things. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray for the world and its leaders, for those who pour out themselves to lead courageously, for the ones who work tirelessly toward the greater glory of God, for Jesuits throughout the world on this feast day of Ignatius, for the people who make the gospel of justice known and loved in lands where peace is fragile. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those at the margins and in need, for those who struggle to live lives of dignity, the lonely, the refugee, the malnourished, the migrant, the imprisoned, for those who seek true discipleship, for the hundreds of millions who have contracted the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the LMU classes of 2020 and 2021, for those who imitate Christ through the mission of our university, for the ones who give of themselves to be people for and with others, for these graduates who will set the world ablaze with God's goodness and love, for all those who have loved these graduates into being. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died long ago or recently, near or far away, for the more than four million who have died from the coronavirus, for Genevieve Underwood of the Religious of Sacred Heart of Mary, Carrie Welsh, Jacqueline Hertren, Patrick Cahalan of the Society of Jesus, Thomas Kelly Jr., Edward Iskander, Christina Naff, Jason Lin, Jerry Huang, Loretta Morris, Robert Walsh of the Society of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. O oh God of every nation, Christ taught us to imitate him so we can all follow the call to be his disciples. Hear our prayers and instill in us the living flame of your love revealed in the sacred heart of Jesus so that we may grow in love and service. We ask this in the spirit through Christ our Lord.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the fount of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you summon us to imitate the discipline of St. Ignatius, that we may hear the voice of the Spirit with docile and trusting hearts. And you move us to conform our life to Christ, that we might imitate him, the model of every virtue. Through him, O Father of mercy, we, have, we are preordained by you that by responding to your gifts, we may complete the journey of faith, be sustained by the support of hope, be refreshed by the strength of love. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out to you as we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. See the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. See the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. You have set us, you have set us, you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the joyful hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church here present and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please wait for instructions from the ministers of hospitality in your sections. Pope Francis has eloquently reminded us that Holy Communion is not a prize for the perfect, but medicine for the sick. We invite everyone to come forward at communion. If you are not of our faith tradition or not prepared to receive the Eucharist, come forward for a blessing with your hand over your heart. One of the ministers of Holy Communion would be honored to pray with you for God's blessing.
Let us pray. May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving in honor of St. Ignatius, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end through Christ our Lord. I invite you to please be seated for just a couple of, of announcements. You know, a, a liturgy like, like this one, and there were two prior to this one, one at 3.30 and 5.30, equally as packed uh, with people praising God and offering thanksgiving for the wonderful accomplishments of the members of the class of 2020 and 2021. We want to acknowledge on behalf of our president, uh, President Snyder, um, all of those who, have, who are gathered here tonight, but also those who have labored with love in preparation for our liturgies. So for all of our students, uh, acolytes, sacristans, lectors, all those who served our liturgies and made them as, as beautiful and prayerful, let us offer them us an applause. In addition, we have some other students, um, members of our service organization uh, community who are here. You'll know them because they're wearing some really fancy cardigans. Uh, and in addition to that, they have a gift for you all, graduates tonight, uh, wonderful tote bags that have been donated by alumni relations. So thank you, service organization members. I'd like to offer a heartfelt thanks to all of the campus ministers in particular who supported these liturgies, who were ministers of hospitality, and in particular those who are responsible for preparing these beautiful liturgies. So for, uh, to Mr. John Flaherty, our Director of Liturgy and Music and Associate Director of Campus Ministry, to Jonas Bogner, our, uh, director, our Associate Director of Liturgy, and to Chris De Silva, and to his choir tonight, uh, Associate Director for Music and all of those musicians. A warm prayer of a uh, pause of gratitude. At this time, as is our long-standing tradition, we offer a blessing prayer for all of our graduates. So graduates, would, I, would you please stand in your places so we can see you? I invite all um, parents here present, all of those, um, those who are gathered in support of these graduates, if you're near them, uh, offer your hand to place your hand on their shoulders. And if you're a little bit far apart, just extend your hands in blessing for them as we ask for God's blessing. Let us pray. God of grace and God of mercy, we praise you for your power and for your action in our lives. And we thank you for your goodness to us. Look with love upon these graduates of Loyola Marymount University as they leave the bluff to begin a new chapter in life. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide them and protect them. May they grow in their knowledge and love of you. May they continue to learn new ways to use their gifts for your glory and for the good of all your people.
we ask this blessing through Christ our Lord. Before our final blessing, I should mention we have Sacred Heart Chapel wide open tonight with the lights on. Uh, if you would like tonight to, to make a visit uh, one last time before you leave the bluff tonight and offer a prayer, uh, you are most welcome to do so. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the church say, Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and Son and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your life.